and welcome in to the box score. Number two, Murph. Two down, eight, nine, ten to go, whatever we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll do 15 shows total. But uh, Murph, we got uh, the opening week of the uh, season underway and uh, you know, it's a lot of excitement, although maybe our teams that we wanted to win maybe didn't win, but still a lot of excitement. Yeah, and, and I want to just take my hat off to the people who make all this possible, obviously the, the sponsors of the show, but I know a lot of uh, a lot of cable TV systems across the state do what DTC does, but none to the extent that they do, including five different high schools. That's a tough job to keep everybody happy, as you well know, uh, but they seem to do a pretty good job, and we're glad to be a part of it. Let's look at our Sonic of uh, Carthage stats of the week. Uh, we want to thank Sonic for uh, sponsoring that. Uh, Gordonsville gets the win 20 to 6 over the Owls uh, in Carthage. First down's real even, uh, but when you look at the rushing yards, Murphy, I think that's the tail of the tape in the fact that uh, Gordonsville controlled the offensive and defensive lines of scrimmage for the most part. Yeah, you add the passing yards in there, and it's not nearly so one-sided, but uh, like you said, the, the ground game is where it's usually always at, and uh, that's almost 2 to 1 uh, in, in favor of the uh, of uh, Tigers. I started to say the Owls and I knew that wasn't right. So anyway. Owls yeah. led 6 nothing in the halftime. Gordwell had a couple of mistakes. Uh, one on a penalty that cost them a touchdown. The other one when they got down to the six inch yard line. Uh, and then Smith County came up with a sonic sack. Then they had a bad snap, which uh, Kaysen fell on uh, to keep them scoreless. But then in the third quarter, they get a touchdown. Then they get a stop at uh, the Owls 40 yard line on fourth and two, score again. Owls get a stop of their own there uh, midway of the fourth quarter. They drive to the Gordonsville 15 yard line uh, before Maddox Randolph comes up with a huge play. 86 yard uh, interception return to seal the deal wow. and give uh, coach Steven Jackson uh, his first win over the Owls now in his third season. Well, it's always nice, like uh, Coach Webster uh, will allude to in in his uh, in his segment later. But it's always good to get that first one uh, as the season opens to build a little momentum for the rest of the year. It goes a long way. Let's go ahead and look at uh, some individual numbers. Bryson Grissom, a big night uh, for the Tigers: 25 rushes, 129 yards, and a touchdown. Max Randolph, a juggling. 21-yard touchdown reception, and then an 86-yard uh, interception return for a touchdown in the last three minutes of the game, and then Dalton Hancock, uh, one reception for 62 yards. Hats off to Mason Cross. Jay Foster couldn't go due to the injury. Uh, Cross stepped in there and I thought performed very, very well uh, for Coach Stephen Jackson. For Smith County, uh, Riley Martin in the passing game really was the key uh, for the Owls offense. He had 131 yards on 18 of 28. Uh, six rushes uh, for uh, 18 yards. Jaden Evans, 15 carries for 51 yards and a touchdown. But it was tough sledding, Murphy, for the Owls on the ground. Well, you got to wonder, too, how much emotion plays in this game because emotion is, is so huge when these two uh, get together, just like it is between Gordonsville and Watertown, uh, which we'll see this week. But uh, congratulations to uh, the Gordonsville Tigers and uh, a great start to the 2024 season. Another border rivalry we look at is the Cab County at one county. Uh, we'll talk to Steve Trapp a little bit later in the show. Jordan Parker came up big uh, for the Tigers, 11-14, uh, 132 passing yards, a couple of uh, drops, or it had been a 13 for 14 night, uh, but rushing the football, 16 rushes for 164 yards, four total touchdowns. Uh, Murphy, when you've got nearly 300 yards total offense that you attribute uh, to your team, uh, you've had a big night. That's true, and a lot of folks will remember the name Grant Swallows, who quarterbacked uh, Livingston Academy for, I guess, two, maybe three full years, I guess. Played at Tech, also played some NFL Europe ball, uh, but he's the director of schools in Warren County, and his oldest son, Brady, uh, got his first start, and I know they had to be awfully proud of that. Cap County uh, receiving Ryan Line six for 71 in a score. And as you mentioned, Mr. Swallows, 116 yards uh, passing and a couple of touchdowns. And Isaiah Robledo, and I hope I'm saying that right, five carries for 64 yards and then five receptions for 125 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Murphy, anytime that Smithville and McManville, which uh, are on, I guess, Highway 56, 
Anytime they get together, that is a border war and usually a fierce battle. Yeah, and Warren won it last year, so you know that the the cab had to be uh, really focused uh, and zeroed in on the pioneers, and uh, obviously that worked because they uh, they evened the score a little bit after that 2023 loss. Cannon County under a first year head coach, they play Monterey. I wound up losing 21 to seven. Of course, Monterey in the same region in football as the Owls. In fact, that's the Owls final opponent on November the 1st uh, when they have to go to Monterey uh, in a game that could decide uh, playoff positioning or whether you get in the playoffs or not. Uh, Colin Fowler, he's finally a senior, uh, has started I think for three years for Monterey. Uh, he had a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown from the quarterback position. And then Logan Montgomery uh, and Luke Blaylock with a uh, receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown for Cannon County. Uh, Eli Gregor at the quarterback, 12 for 21 for 62 yards touchdown. Had an interception, had a 10 uh, yards rushing, but Mr. Garrett Murphy in a first year quarterback role, I think. Uh, still, I think, you know, when you, if you talk to their first year head coach, they'd say, hey, we've got 12 completions and only five yards per completion. That's got to increase. Yeah, it does. The defense played pretty well. Uh, Monterey actually led, I think, 21 to nothing at the half. So it was Monterey winning the first half, Cannon County winning the second, but the overall score favored uh, uh, Monterey. Monterey, not the team that a lot of people think. I can remember years ago, everybody wanted to play Monterey, but Coach Hughes has done a good job in, in making that a pretty solid program up there. And uh, Cannon County uh, uh, just, just didn't have uh, um, uh, enough muscle up front. They only had two players in the offensive line that saw any action to amount to anything last year, and that's going to be their uh, uh, their Achilles heel for a little while until some other young players get ready to step up. Of course, Matt Dyer going through the same thing at Smith County. Sure. He's had a lot of three and four year starters to graduate the last couple of years. Cannon County, as far as uh, receiving, they had Dustin Keller, a junior with 21 yard uh, pass reception and then Zay Odom had a reception and also nine and a half total tackles on defense. Murphy, when you look, and I know, you know, anytime you're a first year head coach, you want to improve from that first game to the second game. And I know that's what a lot of coaches, they go back, they study the film, here's the corrections we need to make. And they play Providence Christian, a private school out of Murfreesboro in Woodbury this week. So that'll be a, that'll be an interesting one. Cannon County won that game. It was close, but Cannon won, Cannon won that game last year. Uh, LeBron Ferguson, former Oakland head coach, uh, is running that program over there. And uh, he too has got a lot of young players on that team. Was that game played at MTSU last year? No. All of all of uh, Providence Christian's games are played at MTSU. They don't gotcha. have a they don't have their own field yet, and that's a pretty costly event for them uh, at five thousand dollars a game. Right. Watertown at Forest. Of course, uh, when's the last time you saw Watertown give up forty points in a game? Uh, I know it's been a long time, uh, but Forest the Rockets get Quincy Mitchell and uh, Cohen Grissom with uh, three touchdowns rushing apiece. Blake Waldorf, a big game for uh, Watertown, the quarterback, a couple of passing touchdowns uh, to Jesse Bratcher, and then Landon Harper and uh, Garrett Davis each had a rushing score. Uh, they got down quite a bit, maybe three scores did Watertown. They come back, uh, get it back close, but in the end come up short, 40 to 34. Coach Palmer, the head coach at Forest this year, in his first year, uh, he's the one that kind of turned around Shovelville Central's program. He likes that quick offense, uh, throw the football a lot. Uh, I notice all of their touchdowns were uh, were via the run, right. but I think that's probably because they were maybe expect Watertown maybe was expecting the passing game a little bit more, and sometimes that opens up things for the other uh, part of. Uh, run or pass. We'll have to Cap County head coach Steve Trapp when we return to the box tour brought to you by Carthage Subway.
your trusted friend for all your grocery needs in Smith County is Carthage Safeway, your home-owned and home-operated supermarket. From the delicious USDA steaks in their meat department to the freshest produce around, Carthage Safeway is proud to serve you and your family. Todd and Angela Skurlock and everyone at Carthage Safeway are always there with a friendly smile and a helping hand. Great service, prices, and selection. That's Carthage Safeway, 80 Dixon Springs Highway, Carthage. Neighbors help each other. It's how community works. And it's how we do business at DTC. You can count on us for internet, TV, and phone, backed by local support. For a limited time, earn a $25 bill credit for your favorite local school and $25 for you when you add or upgrade internet service with DTC. DTC, we're working hard to be a good neighbor. Hello, I'm Bruce Daniel. I've lived in Cannon County all my life. For the last 59 years, I've only made it across the highway. I married my wife, Melody, in 1981. We hauled our first load of freight in 1983 with one truck and a couple old barred trailers. We found a way to make it. Our employees are the backbone of our company. Some of our team members have been with us for more than 30 years. Nearstar Tennessee Zinc Mines is a proud supporter of athletic programs throughout the area, including high school football and high school basketball. To learn more about us, please visit us at our website, www.nearstar.com. Nearstar Tennessee Zinc Mines. Here with head coach Steve Trapp of the DeKalb County Tigers and coach. A big win for your team last week to get off uh, on a great start against a, a, a border rival of yours in Warren County and uh, Mr. Parker showed up pretty big for you. Uh, yeah, he did. Jordan had a good game last week and uh, he'll be the first to tell you though that he couldn't perform like that if you know, he didn't have his teammates performing well around him also. So. Uh, just really happy for him, happy for his teammates, happy for the way uh, the Cab County football started off the season. You know, when you when you give accolades to a running back, people normally think the first people you've got to talk about are the guys up front in the line, and certainly they've got plenty to do. But you got to have some more blocking in the backfield to make that play work, right? Yeah, well, especially when it's your quarterback running the ball. So I mean, we're getting receivers involved. You know, a running back was doing a lot of good work for us in that regard, and. Uh, but it does definitely start up front. You know, so our offensive linemen did a pretty good job after uh, what we thought was a very subpar week prior, you know, at our jamboree. So, you know, we challenged those guys just to simply be better, and uh, they definitely work. Coach, when you look at Jordan Parker, I I'm impressed in the fact that, of course, he's always been a good athlete. I, I know I've seen him uh, on the basketball floor and on the gridiron uh, for now at least three years. Uh, and when he stayed, uh, healthy, uh, he's really been a plus, and the thing that I noticed about him uh, seems like running your offense is the fact that he can run it well and he can throw it well. Yeah, you know, outside looking in, a lot of people would probably be looking at us and be like, well, what are they going to do at quarterback this year? You know, we, we had a three-year starter that we lost last year, but the thing is, you know, Jordan, when he was a sophomore, when he wasn't no bigger than a minute, you know, he come in uh, in the middle of the third game uh, because Briz got hurt and he, we lost him for the year. So, I mean, uh, Jordan's got 10, 12, 13 starts under his belt, and uh, he's won the majority of those. I think he's only lost maybe three games, maybe four. And, uh, uh, you know, so he's done very well every time that his number's been called to play that position. Last year, he had to come in. Uh, you know, like uh, we didn't know that he was going to have to play quarterback until Thursday night. You know, so he didn't practice any quarterback at all much that week last year and uh, come in and may have been one of our cleanest games that we played all year when he started at quarterback for us last year. So um, he's got a lot of moxie about him. He understands why we're doing what we're doing, why we're calling what we're calling. Um, and we understand that he can be a dual threat guy for us. And, uh, you know, whatever the week calls for, you know, he's – He's willing and able to be that for So, like I said, I'm just super excited for, you know, how he played last week. But, uh, you know, last week's over and we're ready to move on. 
Obviously, the win over Warren County is, is always big, especially after you lost to them last year. But you mentioned uh, the, the double threat. And like you said, you don't always have that kind of thing, but uh, it really uh, adds to the size of the playbook, I guess you might say, because there's so many different things he can do. It does, and I mean, like I said, we only had three incompletions on the night, and two of those were drops that hit a receiver right in the hand. But, uh, you know, second play of the game, we've just got a basic route call, but he it breaks down a little bit. He scrambles outside the pocket. Uh, receiver does a good job breaking down the sideline. We get a 37-yard gain, and we were on the five-yard line, so it gets us out of the hole. Uh, the one touchdown pass he threw, the same situation. You know, he was able to scramble outside. Receiver was able to keep everything alive, and we get a wide-open touchdown. You know, so his... His feet's a big plus for us. Uh, you know, the linemen don't have to be perfect, but we, we want him to work to be that. Because uh, if he can set his feet and throw in the pocket, we're just as dangerous. But if it breaks down, he does have the ability to continue plays for us, and uh, that's a big thing. All right, Coach Strap, I'm sitting beside the guru, but I'm going to have to nickname you over the last 20 years the quarterback guru because it <laughs> seems like every year you come up with a great athlete that can both run it and pass it. What is it about, and, and it's got to be in the secret sauce that you do because <laughs> of fact, Coach, every year the Cavs got a good dual threat quarterback. Well, I mean, I, I want to go back to when we, you know, when Hunter Poteet first took over and, uh, you know, when I kind of figured out what we wanted to be as an offense and, you know, and uh, his skill set and what he was able to do was a big thing. I'd like to give Linus Martin a lot of credit, too, because when Hunter was in, uh, junior pro, you know, I was offensive coordinator for a couple weeks and we were learning and we were actually running like wishbone. Uh, and then I got this job and then Linus and, uh, you know, Bradley Hendricks and all those were heck of, they took Hunter, put him at quarterback, spread everything out and they were throwing it around like crazy at the middle school level. So uh, just seeing that and then knowing that, but, uh, you know, his freshman year after Hunter took over the last game of the year, uh, well, his sophomore year, I'm sorry, that's my, it was his freshman year, but my second year, uh, we played Macon County the last game of the year, and uh, we won, and we threw for over 300 yards. And Ooh. It was the first district game that we had won in like eight years, I think, and, uh, you know, I was like, hey, we, we can do this. You know, we had a lot of guys coming back, and, you know, so just a lot of research, just a lot of studying, just a lot of figuring out what we can do with these guys, and then just a lot of reps and a lot of practice, but... But really, as far as all these quarterbacks that I've had, uh, you know, I had the same question a couple weeks ago because I have been blessed with really good guys, really good football players, and really have big hearts. Uh, I don't try to change them mechanically a whole lot. There's a few things that I look at that I want to fix, but I want them to be natural. I don't want them to be robots. Uh, but the biggest thing that I can say about all these quality guys that we've had is, you know, I talk to them a lot just about being a servant. Uh, because being a quarterback, uh, you know, you can do your deal if those other 10 guys are doing theirs. So we want to put everybody else on the platter and we want to serve them. And then ultimately everybody's eyes on Friday nights looking at the head coach and the quarterback. So uh, in that regard, we just got to make sure that we don't have bad days and that we can serve the, those around us uh, so that everybody gets elevated. So the ones that's been really special, yes, they've been great athletes. They can throw, they can run, they're smart. They're bought in, but they've got a large servant towel and it's dirty. That goes a long, long way. Steve, I've known you for 20 plus years and uh, I remember those first few years. Uh, it was tough. It was really tough for you and your staff, but uh, things are a lot different now in a lot of different ways. What do you think is the biggest single change that, that maybe you learned over the years that makes it appear so different? I, well, I mean, like I said, those first three years, I had the same question also a week or so ago, but, you know, what makes things different here from when we started? I mean, I come in as a junior pro coach, so the knowledge uh, that is needed to, you know, now one thing that I always had and what I promised them when they gave me the job was that we would work, uh, that nobody would outwork us. So, you know, we established a culture that's built on a process of work and serving each other to elevate each other. So. Uh, and that message has not changed since day one, but also just becoming smarter as a coach, uh, becoming more mature as a, home, uh, a human being. I mean, I was 26 years old. I'd done six years of junior pro. Uh, you know, so I was young and I was egotistical and I thought that I could come in here and just work like crazy and be successful. Uh, we worked like crazy, but we weren't successful. But like I said, becoming smarter as a coach. But 
One of the biggest things is is taking a step back from what I wanted to accomplish for myself. Because uh, I can remember talking to these guys about, hey, I want to be a district coach of the year. I want to do this. I want to win 100 games. I want to do this. And that's the way I talked to the guys the first couple of years. And, you know, so it was all about me. Uh, so I think the biggest thing that really set the vision straight and got our program in the other direction is just buying into what my faith is. And our, my faith tells me that, you know, it's not supposed to be about you. It's supposed to be about others. Um, so I made a, a conscious effort to make sure to put faith above everything and, and run this program based off my faith uh, and make sure that these guys are elevated and everybody around me is elevated so that they can have success. And in return, any kind of acknowledgement that I may get is all based off what they have done. So I think that's the biggest thing that changed this thing around. And I'm just grateful to God that uh, he opened my eyes and made me realize that, you know, hey, him first, family next, and then football can come in there. Absolutely. And a lot of folks probably don't know that you teach a senior adult Sunday school class. I mean, everybody in the class is old enough almost to be your grandfather, and I think that speaks volumes for you and what your philosophy is all about. And I take my hat off to you for that, Steve. I will. I appreciate that. I know we've had a lot of conversations about that, and I always enjoy those. But uh, you know, I started. To, I don't even know when I started teaching Sunday school. Probably I've been teaching it as long as I've been coaching. I guess I don't know. It was. Hey, can you fill in one week? And then it's I've I've been there ever since, and <laughs> uh, that's something I'm grateful to have the opportunity to do. It keeps me grounded. It keeps me focused. Ultimately, what needs to be focused on. Uh, and when it starts going a little bit the wrong way, I understand how you know I get thumped in the head by the big man to say, Hey, get your mind back right. You know, we're not perfect uh, by no means. Uh, you know, we all fail daily, but uh, again, it's it's all about the three F's, and that's faith, family, and football. Well, Coach, I want to, <clears throat> first of all, thank you. Um, I've been in this long enough, or I feel like I have, uh, to know how cordial some coaches are and some coaches aren't. It's not their nature, but every time we've called on you, whether it be radio or TV, you've always uh, gone above and beyond. When we go to your place, we're always, you roll out the red carpet, and, and as a media person uh, for 30 plus years, I, I sure do appreciate it. Well, I could like just, uh, when I was coaching junior pro, I know one time for Christmas, my wife got me a book. It's called the Football Coaching Bible. And one of the first lessons in there, it talks about building and sustaining the high school football program. And one of the first lessons I learned is, you know, you have to use the media to, to promote your kids and to promote your program. So I'm grateful for all the opportunities to, to talk about my program and our team and our kids uh, to all the outlets that reach out. So uh, I just want to say thank you to you. And I, I appreciate the kind words. and. You know, uh, and my biggest thing is, you know, just when it's all said and done with Coach Trapp and the Cal County football, I hope people can just say that was a genuine guy that worked his tail off for those kids. Well said, Coach. Coach Steve Trapp has been our guest, and we'll have more on the box score brought to you by Carthage Saveway when we return. Got a special outdoor project that you need to tackle? BDGR Excavating is the one to call. Custom land clearing, mulching, excavation, and more. They can help get the job done, even when others have failed. Call the problem solvers at BDGR at 615-489-1329 and let them help you get that project out of the way so you can really start enjoying your property. BDGR Excavating. Nearstar Tennessee Zinc Mines is a proud supporter of athletic programs throughout the area, including high school football and high school basketball. To learn more about us, please visit us at our website, www.nearstar.com. Nearstar Tennessee Zinc Mines. Looking to buy or sell a home? Call Underwood Hometown Realty today. Our experienced team of professionals is here to guide you every step of the way. Whether you're a first-time buyer or looking to sell, we make the process smooth and stress-free. With deep roots in the community, we know the local market inside and out. Let us help you find your dream home or get the best value for your current one. Call Underwood Hometown Realty now at 615-683-3300, where hometown service meets real estate expertise. 
Your trusted friend for all your grocery needs in Smith County is Carthage Safeway, your home-owned and home-operated supermarket. From the delicious USDA steaks in their meat department to the freshest produce around, Carthage Safeway is proud to serve you and your family. Todd and Angela Skurlock and everyone at Carthage Safeway are always there with a friendly smile and a helping hand. Great service, prices, and selection. That's Carthage Safeway, 80 Dixon Springs Highway, Carthage. And welcome back to the box score. Terry Collins along with Murphy Fair. We want to thank Carthage Saveway for being our title sponsor again this year. And we've got Watertown uh, football head coach Gavin Webster. And uh, this week is uh, a tough one for Gavin because he's playing his alma mater, Gordonsville Tigers, and uh, they looked pretty good against the house last week. Yeah, they did. Uh, they, you know, they got a. They look like they got a good football team this year. You know, they they're sound up front. Um, especially, you know, the offensive line, defensive line, very sound up front and uh, got a got a good little running back. So, they, you know, they uh, controlled the line of scrimmage and dominated it last week, it looked like. Coach, I, uh, I can't help but think about uh, when, when Terry mentioned your alma mater, when uh, Jimmy Maynard was at Smith County, uh, I think the, the Livingston Academy game was the one he wanted the most because that's where he played and you know everybody in Overton County knew who Jimmy Maynard was. Is that kind of the case with you or is over the years is that kind of rubbed off a little bit? Well I don't know that it's rubbed off. I mean yeah I, I, I really you know it's uh, you know yeah you you want to win it you know I mean it's just one of those things that's that's where I went to went to school at it's where I'm from and you know, that's just one of those games you want to win, you know. So uh, I would say, you know, it's 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 at the top. It's at the top water too, you know. Coach, when you look at the rivalry between Gordonsville and Watertown through the years, I'm not going to say it's always been a friendly one because I remember some uh, <laughs> brouhaha's down through the years, but a spirited rival, I guess, is the way I need to put that, Coach. Uh, right. Uh, you know, between these two schools, and uh, it goes back a long, long way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, you know, of course, I mean, you were both in school about the same time, you know, and, uh, you know, like you said, there were some spirited, spirited rivals, <laughs> rivalries back then. So, and then, uh, you know, it's pretty much, you know, I won't say it's a spirited for Watertown and, and Goldsville, but it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good rivalry, you know, and it's, it goes back a long ways. I wouldn't say that, Gavin. If you all have been in school about the same time, how come you look so much younger than Terry does? <laughs> I, I guess I take better care of that. <laughs> he's, got the fountain, he's got the fountain of youth, that's for sure. Bill Robinson, give it to him, I guess. But coach, when you, uh, yeah. when you look at this game, you're coming off a loss, Gordonsville's coming off a win. I'm sure Steven Jackson, as soon as that game was over at Al Stadium, say, hey, you got to get your feet back down, you got to get your head right, because if you don't, we can pick up an L against Watertown. Conversely, your yeah. team lost, and they're hungry for a win uh, come Friday night. Yeah, we are hungry. You know, our kids, you know, we could have very well, uh, you know, laid down it, you know, toward the end last week, you know, but we gave ourselves a shot. That's one thing about this bunch. We are young. You know, we're, we're pretty much uh, sophomore, junior-oriented, very young bunch, and, and, and most of those guys that are juniors are first-year starters. So, very young football team. Uh, I, one thing I'll give my hats off to our boys last week, they kept fighting, and they kept fighting to the end, even when, you know, uh, four score day. I think we got within, you know, uh, I think it was within four points. And then, uh, you know, we were thinking, you know, if we can get a defensive hold here, and, of course, they wound up scoring, and you know they could have, and that was like like two minutes, less than two minutes left, and we could have very well hung our heads, and we went back down and scored, and you know got within got within six, you know, and um, and that's what it wound up, and uh, but um, you know we kept fighting. That's that's one thing I'll give to them, and yeah, they are hungry for a win, and you know we're just looking for improvement each week, and um, you know hopefully we can get that this week. Coach, you've had to, like you said, you've had to go to your uh, freshman and sophomore classes a little bit after after losing, I think, what, three of your key two-way starters. Uh, tell us how those young men are doing and uh, 
are, are they still being good leaders on the sideline, even though they're not able to play any this year? Yeah, they are. I mean, you know, they're, you know, it, it you know, it's tough, but I feel for them. You know, two of them are seniors. You know, they're they're finished. They won't play football again. And, and one of them is a junior. Okay. Um, he will be back. And uh, it's tough. You know, you get a season into injury like that. And uh, they're, they're still around. Uh, they try to still help. They try to be supportive. And, you know, it's just tough in any type of situation like that. Coach, as you look at your team, defensively, you always have, uh, you know, had a A plus, I guess, in that side of the ball. A long time since I know Watertown's given up that many points on a Friday night, as many as you did against Forest last week. But with the young guys, I, I think the big thing is week by week, you see an improvement. And that way, the time you get to your region play, then hopefully those guys are a little bit more experienced and maybe don't make the same mistakes as they, as they did earlier. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're looking for, Terry. I mean, we're looking for improvement each week. Uh, they're, they are eager. They're willing to learn, you know. And, you know, uh, it's just a um, – I guess it's just you got to go through the growing pains with them, you know. When you're playing a young bunch, you know, they still make young mistakes, but they're learning from it, and you hope that they don't make the same ones the following week. So, hopefully, you know, we get um, – um, got last week's game down and this week, and – we get into region play next week, so hopefully we'll have a lot of those mistakes out of the way and and uh, been able to execute a little better. Gavin, a lot of people it doesn't matter who's playing who they give uh, they give a lot of credit to home field advantage, and uh, certainly I know you're happy that that game's being played at your place. Uh, but how much difference does that really make in the long run? I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. Uh, I mean, I, mean it, I guess it probably makes a little bit difference, but. Especially if you had a long road trip, you know, but when there's just a close proximity, you know, uh, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of times, sometimes I just soon play away because you don't, you don't have so much to get prepared for as far as, <laughs> you know, getting your field ready and doing this and doing that. You know, sometimes it's just easy to just get on the bus, get prepared for the week, get on the bus and and go somewhere, you know. Should be a good crowd on both sides of the field. I don't think anybody in Gordonsville needs a road map to get to Watertown, do they? No, no, we should have a good crowd. There's always good crowds between Gordonsville and Watertown. Coach, when you look at the heat, that's been a concern this week. I know it's affected practice, uh, whether you can go out in pads or not. Also, the fact that, you know, Friday night, hopefully after this Friday night, things will cool down and you can get back to more fall weather. Uh, at least get out of the 100 uh, degree range. But that's always a concern, I know, for you as a coach, to keep them hydrated. Um, and, and different people react to heat in different ways. Yeah, yeah, we've had a hot week. You know, we've been pretty blessed with some uh, nice temperatures, and this week's hit us. Uh, we were able to get out the last uh, last couple of days uh, outside for a break, you know, for a little, not as long as we normally have, but, you know, able to get out the last two days for a little while. And, uh, you know, that's the main thing. We preach, you know, hydration, hydration. You know, it just ain't about, you know, hydrating the day of. You got you to gotta start at the beginning of the week, you know, and and hopefully they heed the warning. And, you know, we, we try to, you know, keep them plenty of water and Gatorade and, you know, try to help that situation out too. But it's going to be a hot one. I think uh, looking at the temp, it's not going to be as hot. Well, I won't say it's going to be as hot Friday, but – uh, it's going to probably be in the mid-80s kickoff, but the, the humidity is what's going to be rough right now. And just looking at it, it seems like the humidity is going to get higher as the night goes on. So, you know, if you remember last year's game that, that, that Goins will get us and them, you know, it was – we had to – what um, – we had to start it late, you know, and it was just a real muggy night. Coach, I know facing Goinsville, you've got a lot of friends on the other sideline. But I guess once the ball kicks off – uh, you want to win just as badly as they do. Oh, yeah. You know, I know all those guys, grew up with all those guys. And, you know, you know, Steven's a, a little bit younger than me, known him for a long time, good friends with them all. And, and like you said, good friends with them. But when that ball gets kicked off, I don't, you know, it don't matter who they are. We want to beat them just as bad as they want to beat us. So, you know, it, friendship's kind of set aside, you know, and after the game, you know, everything back to normal. Well, coach, 
one of the biggest rivalries, I think, in Middle Tennessee. And uh, do you have any idea how far back that rivalry goes? I do not, uh, you know, because it was a brief period they didn't play there in the 70s. I know they they played for a long time. I'd have to go back and look in the books. But uh, there was a brief period there, probably four years, that they didn't play and then got back to playing again. So, I, man, I really don't know off the top of my head, but they, they played for a long time. Sounds like at least 40 years or more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Coach Gavin Webster, we appreciate you visiting with us. Best of luck against Gordonsville on Friday night. Thank you, guys. Okay, we'll have a look, a little more in-depth look at the Gordonsville Watertown game, which is our uh, Huff and Puff Trucking Game of the Week on DTC Sports. When we return, we'll get Murphy's matchups as we return to the box score presented by Carthage Segway. What is your emergency? I think I'm being robbed. Sir? These big home security guys want way too much money from me. Let's connect you to a local company right away. It's a crime what big national companies charge for home security. For just $49.99, get a system with a touch keypad, three window or door sensors, motion detector, key fob, and standard installation. Help us on the way, sir. Oh, thank you. Switch now and save. Call or visit DTC Security Online today. If you're a commercial driver looking for a company to call home, Huff & Puff Trucking is the company for you. Our employees are professional and dedicated individuals that take pride in what they do. We offer an outstanding pay package with a dispatch structure that maximizes your home time. To learn more about a company that knows you by name and treats you like family, call us at 1-800-965-5033 or visit our website at huffpufftrucking.com. Got a special outdoor project that you need to tackle? BDGR Excavating is the one to call. Custom land clearing, mulching, excavation, and more. They can help get the job done, even when others have failed. Call the problem solvers at BDGR at 615-489-1329 and let them help you get that project out of the way so you can really start enjoying your property. BDGR Excavating. Looking to buy or sell a home? Call Underwood Hometown Realty today. Our experienced team of professionals is here to guide you every step of the way. Whether you're a first-time buyer or looking to sell, we make the process smooth and stress-free. With deep roots in the community, we know the local market inside and out. Let us help you find your dream home or get the best value for your current one. Call Underwood Hometown Realty now at 615-683-3300 where hometown service meets real estate expertise. And welcome back to the box score for the uh, final session. And uh, we want to thank Carthage Saveway. Uh, go by and see Todd and Angela out on Highway 25. They've got a great deli. In fact, they provide us food on Friday night, Murph. Uh, and, uh, and we always appreciate Todd and Angela. They've they provided us some food for this taping too, I That's think, true. haven't That's they? True. Uh, let's look at the uh, upcoming matchup, uh, Gordonsville and Watertown, a, a big rivalry, uh, 645. Of course, our show will be on at 6, uh, and then on www.dtc3.tv or on Channel 3. Uh, you can watch this one in uh, Murph. Uh, it'll be Gavin Webster uh, entertaining his uh, alma mater, the Gordonsville Tigers, and of course, he knows a lot of players and parents and coaches on the other sideline. Uh, without a doubt. By the way, I'm going to get another another plug to DTC because on my phone, even though I was in Adamsville, I was able to watch a little of that Carthage uh, Gordonsville game last week. So thanks, thanks to uh, Justin for that information on how to do that. Let's go ahead and look. Murphy going to get into his picks, give him a little time to talk about these. In East Tennessee, Anderson County at Sign Seal. Boy, Anderson County just really surprised me with their uh, shocking win over Powell last week. So I've got to go with Anderson County on that one. That's in the same county with uh, Clinton and Oak Ridge, but they've uh, they've got a beautiful stadium with artificial turf and uh, LED lighting. It's a, it's a really big deal to go to a game there, and I think Anderson County gets another win this week. Of course, Bearden plays at Alcoa. Alcoa coming off a loss, I think, to Ravenwood, Murph. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure the Tornadoes will be ready to get back on the winning track. Yeah. Alcoa has won an amazing nine straight 
state titles. It's just hard to imagine uh, uh, that they got beat by Ravenwood, but Ravenwood is a 6A team and uh, uh, they've, they've got a good program there. Expect Alcoa to bounce back though and, uh, and get that win against Bearden, although Bearden's a team that beat Knoxville West last week. Right. Knoxville West, the defending 5A state champion, I think they, uh, I think they more than make up for last week's loss with a win at home against Clinton this week. Murphy, when you look at these schools in East Tennessee, of course these are the headliners, but you, you're talking that schools that year in, year out have a solid program, make a deep run in the playoffs uh, when you look at these six teams. Well, they do, they really do. And, and those programs that are like that, uh, money doesn't seem to be much, much of an issue. Uh, I've, I've talked to someone just the other day and they told me that at uh, Rockvale, the newest high school in Rutherford County near Eagleville, uh, had a $1.2 million uh, budget for their stadium over there. Right. That was not tax money, that was just out of your pocket money. Right. Middle Tennessee picks uh, DCA at Friendship. That'll be interesting. DCA uh, doesn't have Paul, uh, uh, well, Wade. Paul Wade, thank you, doesn't have him. He's at Brentwood Academy now, and that's a, that's a great rivalry between those two, but I think uh, John McNeil, who's been at uh, Friendship for a long, long time, uh, pulls away the win without uh, Paul Wade on the DCA sideline. Murphy, a Thursday night game, CPA at Pearl Con. Yeah, and I think I may go to that one. The Firebirds are another highly ranked team that, uh, uh, but they lost last week to NBA by two. Uh, I'm not sure that they can recover enough to, uh, uh, to, to beat CPA. CPA beat a very good Brentwood Academy team last week, and uh, I think they'll probably win at Pearl Cone. That's where I plan on going. Thursday night. I think the coffee pot games next, Coffee that's, County and Tullahoma. That's correct. And that's a tough one to call. Uh, coffee County put a lot of points on the scoreboard last week, uh, but Tullahoma currently holds that tr uh, coffee pot trophy, if you will. And I think with it being played at Tullahoma, uh, Tullahoma probably wins that one too. So get some West Tennessee picks, Lake County at Dyersburg. Yeah, less than 30 miles separate these two schools. They haven't played each other a whole lot. At one time, Dyersburg was 4A, Lake County was 1A. Uh, Dyersburg's now in the 3A ranks, but my money's gonna be on Dyersburg, and, uh, don't be, but don't be surprised if the Falcons uh, pull off a major upset. They're awfully athletic and speed's the name of the game in Tiptonville. Peabody at Jackson Christian. This one could go either way, I think. Both teams should go uh, very deep into the playoffs. I think the private school wins, but again, this year's game uh, against the Golden Tide, a team that was very, very young last week, last year, uh, that could go either way, I think. I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Jackson Christian on that one, but again, because they're the home team. Le Lexington at Riverside. Uh, defending 2A state champ Riverside beat 4A Lexington 54 to seven last year. I think that's one of the big reasons uh, Lexington got a new football coach. Derek Carr, who was, uh, uh, who was head coach at Milan last year, took that job. And I think because of that, Lexington probably wins this year. They put a lot of points on the board last week themselves. All right, Murph, give us these Middle Tennessee picks, all three of them. Cannon County, I'm gonna have to go with that one because uh, because they won last year, and I know you don't do that, but anyway, they'll be playing at home, and that does make a difference. Uh, I think in the next game, oh, we, uh, I'm gonna go with Smith County on that, although that's probably gonna be an upset if that happens, and then Gordonsville, I think, probably knocks off Watertown. We want to thank our uh, sponsors. Of course, our title sponsor is Carthage Saveway. We have Huff & Puff Trucking, Nire Star, uh, Sonic of Carthage, Underwood Home Realty, and BDGR Excavating. Uh, thanks to those science folks for sponsoring uh, tonight's show. For Justin Malden and for Murphy Fair, I'm Terry Collins. Good night on The Box Score.